as the hour of Culture 2 Migos' newest album, as the hour approaches within three hours, where I'm on the coast of California, so for me it's in three hours. For you niggas that are located in Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, anywhere below the Mason Dixon line or below the Bible Belt, it might be released sooner than that. I know you niggas are going to download it and try to bootleg that album in the numbers, which really isn't necessary because I think you can get it free on Spotify or Apple with iTunes, etc. Et but I didn't know that. Oh, oh, my microphone tripped. Hold up. Dysfunction. Dysfunction. Okay, we're back. I'd also like to note that the day, the hour, the time, the commencement of Valentine's Day is approaching within less than three weeks. And I just want to note that I still see a lot of you niggas treating your bitches like they like they broken iPhone cords. And I just want to let you know that even if it is a broken cord, that is still your baby. That's still your cord. That's what you use to charge your battery. That's what you use to, to exist in life. Appreciate your woman. Appreciate her because, as I always say, there's a real nigga out there who appreciate you, who will appreciate her much more and more satisfactorily, satisfactor, satisfactorily, whatever, whichever. It's times like this when it becomes apparent that a nigga got a GED. There is another nigga out there who will treat your girl way more, way more satisfactorily than you will. With that being said, welcome to the People's Paradise Podcast. What's going on, my people out here? We live, 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 live. What's going on with you guys? How you doing? Welcome to the family. Welcome to the world. What's going on? Welcome to the world, the team, the Lord, the God. We are here having a great time, enjoying the night. It is a good day. It is a great Thursday. Friday is within three hours. The Migos album. I'll be real with you. I commenced the podcast talking about the whole Migos album. Like, I'll be real with you. I'm not even necessarily that hyped about the album's release. I fuck with the Migos. I do think the majority of the population kind of disregards Takeoff's talent more than Offset and Quavo. I don't know who this whole thing where they were saying, like, like, um, hold my microphone trip again. Hold on. Okay. We started this whole thing where they said, like, Quavo was the most talented member of the Migos. Like, who started that? Like, they. They have their own, like, ah, my microphone keeps tripping. Hold on, ignore that last time, I promise. They have their own, they all have their own talent that they bring to the table, which it ain't like, it ain't like all them niggas have, like, some different level of talent. You know, I will say, though, the the comp, the comp, the collab album that Quavo did with Metro, with, with Metro Boom, the collab album that Quavo did with Big Sean is shit compared to the collab album that 21 Savage did with, um, what's my boy's name, Offset. That that without warning shit, that shit was slapping last year. Like I was his job playing shit. I'm gang banging. That was the album. I'm gonna tell you right now because for those of you guys who've been listening to this podcast long enough, nigga, you remember I was talking shit about Twenty One Savage for a while. For a while, I was like, man, what, why are y'all fucking with this nigga? This nigga ain't even all that. This nigga ain't even all that Gucci like that. But then after a while, I sort of got to sort of get him more into it. Start listening to more of him. Like okay, especially that especially that song uh, "Rap Save Me." Like I'm gang banging. I'm round with anxious. And I think just put the question in these things. Like, whenever, whenever Twinwood Savage concludes a word or a verb or adjective, it always sounds like he has an extra tooth that's right about to touch the back of his lip when he sit when he says the last word. And I'm dangerous. Like, <laughs> that's when you. That's when you know they got a goofy ass laugh. Like, I laughed and made my microphone cut off. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, what the heck? Uh, that's when you know my mic but my life is bad. I I laughed. Hold on, hold on. Okay, anyway. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay, we're good, we're good. It's right now. The reason why it keeps cutting in and out is because I have my uh, microphone plugged into my iPad and it keeps cutting off. That's why it's doing that. I apologize. I'm going to try to make sure it doesn't do that again. And what happens is every time I guess like a lot of wind gets in the microphone, it cuts off. So I have to refrain from laughing and talking too loud. So now that I understand that, now that I have some more understanding, now that I know what the error is, what is causing this issue right now, now we can begin talking. How are you guys doing right now? I'm going to go into the chat box section and say, what's up to my niggas? So it's up to my niggas. Let me type. What's up, my negroids? What's up, my negroids? And to anybody else who's listening to this podcast who might be of mongoloid descent, who might be of Caucasian descent, what is going on with you? How are you doing? Welcome to the podcast, man. I'm gonna tell you. 
Funny story, funny story, completely unrelated to what I wanted to talk to you about today. I actually wanted to talk to you about the carnival that's approaching in Brazil. The carnival is coming this season. The carnival is coming, and it's going to be dope. It's going to be relaxing. I recommend all of you guys who got $1,800 just to spare, just to get you hotel, to go out hard to Rio de Janeiro and fuck four or five 22-year-old Brazilian with asses like Beyonce combined with Shakira. It is a wise investment to make if you want to have a good time. Um... There's this YouTube channel called StreetGangs.com, and I go on it just because I like to read about street gangs. I ain't gonna lie to you. I've always been, I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm one of the dudes who really will just go on the internet and, and just gang niggas, surf about gang shit, the street shit, just figuring out what's going, just figuring out what the young niggas are doing out here. You know, just, just, just to know, just, just to know, just to know how in danger my life is if I go to Compton today. Like, just to know how, what nigga, what, 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 what niggas is doing out here. Because I don't want to blame my ass just for walking the neighborhood. And I ain't realize that niggas is really with the shit in, you know, it can, because it can, because it can, hold on, hold on, because it can, because it can. It can happen. It can go down. It can break down. You know, if you go to the right place. And on streetgangs.com, basically their content is based off interviewing actual gang members who actually were with the shit, who actually were out there shooting niggas and putting in that daytime work. They actually interviewed some of these niggas. And like, they went to Long Beach interview dudes who were like in like the rolling 20s Crip Gang, the rolling 60s Crip Gang, insane Crip. They interview a lot of Crip Gangs. Treetop Pyru, Long Sidebar, Skyline Pyru. Neighborhood crip, all these different crip, all these different crip, oh yeah, all these different gangs, right? And so, at one video, in one video, they interviewed this black dude who was a former member of the Primera Flats gang, which is a Mexican gang. You know, it's a, um, it's under the Mexican mafia, and then the Mexican mafia don't fuck with niggas. But at the time when he joined, which is the sixties and seventies, because that's when he grew up, they were at that time there was no. They're right now in Southern California, and I I haven't really I haven't. From what I know about the gang culture in L.A. and L.A. and Southern Cal, is it, is it for me doing footwork and actually fucking with niggas out there? It really just comes from what I read online. But there's like this thing with like the Mexican mafia. They put a hit out basically where all the gangs under them, Officer Daniels, can't fuck with people. For those who don't know, when you come to California with Mexicans, there's generally two subgroups, Southern Southerners and Northerner gangs. Northerners fuck with niggas. Like all the Northerners, they usually love us. They fuck with us. They cool with us. We all going to the same house parties, all kicking. It's dope. They cool with us. But when it comes to the, um, when it comes to the, um, the Southerners generally they speak and they don't fuck with niggas. They hate black people. They hate Asians. They hate everybody. But the gang that he joined at the time, they went racist. So he joined this Mexican gang and he adopted a culture. He was one of them. He banged one of them. He served jail time with them niggas. And it's funny seeing this, this 63 year old black man speak, talk and walk, speak, talk, walk dress like an OG, an OG Mexican dude who did 37 years in San Quentin State Prison. Like, yes, I joined the, I joined the, like, you know, like, they even had the accent, the manners. I joined the gang with my brothers because at the time they were my brothers, you you saw a few, you saw a few niggas who weren't in the gang because at the time, and it's a niggas. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck? Like, it was just funny, bro. Like, cause I, like, like, it, it's just, it, it's just, it's just, a, it's a very funny thing to see. Like, it was, it's very funny to see that. Like, I was really low key. Ah. Very funny to see. Like, I was really low key laughing. Like, oh my God, this dude is, this is hilarious. But at the same time, that was a story. And, you know, it had me really thinking about the racial unity that we have in Northern California. You know, I will say, generally, spe- generally speaking, realistically, I don't know. Because if you read online about that stuff, they make it seem like. If you black and you walk into a Mexican neighborhood, niggas is really finna hop out with AK-47 Dracos in the same bag that the Santa Claus puts his president in and shoot you and put your body in and toss you in front of, like, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles or something like that. But I'll be honest with you, but I used to live in San Diego. I lived in San Diego for two years. And when I lived out there, I dated Mexican girls. Like, nobody ever had a problem. San Diego's in Southern California, for those who aren't aware of the geographical reference and why I brought that up. But... I dated two Mexican girls out there, and they mom and daddy have an issue with me, nigga. They love me, you know? But then again, I'm in a different situation than most dudes, because I'm the, you know, a lot of you guys out there, you familiar with me, you know me, I'm the, I'm the lovable guy, you know? I'm the lovable guy. I'm the guy at the party, turning up, having a good time, tossing them back, and by tossing them back, I'm not referring to cups of liquor, amounts liquor, like you drunkard, liquor-bound, liquor-bound niggers. I just love to, I just, I just love I actually don't partake into the drinking of alcohol. I feel like I feel like I feel like I am above it, and I feel like God gave me better sense than that. You know, I'm joking. I honestly don't. I, for those of you guys who do drink, and we're about to talk about carnival season. For those of you guys who do drink, 
I know a lot of niggas, right? I know a lot of niggas out here. They use their tax return to buy tickets to New Orleans for the comp for the Mardi Gras festival and the Essence festival. And for those of you guys who drink, I have nothing against those who partake in alcohol. If you drink, drink. And if you drink, 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 drink all you want to. You know, I just me personally, that ain't never been for me. It ain't never been my cup of tea. I just never been that. I just, I don't know. I never, I never really got into drinking. Like I just, I've, I, it just has never been for me. You know, I drink, I. Never been for me. I don't. I don't like doing stuff that takes me out of my mental of control of who I am. Like I don't like stuff like that that makes puts me in states where I feel like I can't control who I am. I can't control what I do. You know, I've seen. And we live in a day and age. You got all these goddamn sexual assault stories coming out the closet, like Tiny Toons Adventures. You have all these just these stories coming out. I don't want to be one of those stories in the time where I'm so mentally impaired that I don't know what I'm doing. And that shit. That shit's scary, man. Like I just like I don't know, man. Like. Whew, man, it's, it's just a lot. I don't know. I be thinking. I be. I just. I be thinking. I be thinking about that stuff sometimes, nigga. You know, you know, young nigga be thinking about that sometimes. But with that being said, February, February is approaching. Carnival season is approaching, and it is time for us now to go into carnival season. For those who are unaware what carnival season is, carnival season is the time of the year where most countries in the Western Hemisphere generally have Latin, generally to have some Latin American or Negro influence, whether you're in. Dominican Republic, whether you're in Trinidad and Tobago, whether you're in Jamaica, whether you're in the Virgin Islands, whether you're in Brazil, whether you're in Colombia, we are all celebrating in the form of Condoblet. We are all celebrating Lent, the festival of Lent. If you're in New Orleans, we call it the Mardi Gras. And also in Mobile, they have what they call it the Mardi Gras. Mobile, Alabama actually does has a pretty, pretty celebratory festival of like it's kind of almost like an echo of new orleans obviously and it's popping this new orleans i'm just saying you feel me nigga new orleans is with this shit and i'm only speaking i'm only speaking highly and speaking braggingly about new orleans culture nigga because my family from there my dad say shout out to my family out there in st charles Parish, nigga my family nigga we out here live nigga to my family steadily always taking bodies nigga shout to my, to my family out here yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. The Mott family is one of the most successful families in the New Orleans region. But nah, um, it's a really dope fest. It's a really dope um, tradition. And I don't know if the, I don't know if I can say the pan, the pan American term I can use for all our cultures combined. I can say in just, um, I don't know, new age American culture, just a new world culture. I guess we can say it's a very, very dope tradition in new American culture. And, I love it. I really do regret that my pockets is on my pockets is on lean so bad that nigga I can't even go to the any place where they have like a real Mardi Gras Philip festival. I mean they have one I think in um in Frisco in San Francisco and I wanna go and attend those ones. But at the same time, I don't know if it's but at the same time, I don't know if I can do that just because nigga, My pockets are telling me my pockets are telling me something different, nigga. They're telling me nigga, you cannot do that at at all. So with that being said, it's a little bit it's a little bit sucky, but it's okay. I shall be fine. I shall be fine. Um some of you guys are listening to me live right now. A lot of you guys live in regions where they have Mardi Gras Festival. I know some of y'all live in New Orleans, some of y'all live in Alabama. Um correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think in Miami, Florida, they're having the Mardi Gras celebration out there as well. Um, but shit, this is Miami, nigga. They have celebrations for everything, nigga. Six niggas can get killed on Tuesday, and one of them worked at McDonald's and was about to be an assistant manager, nigga. And they'll have a celebration for that, nigga. Nigga, <laughs> niggas be on the curb with McDonald's and, and, and 42nd Ave. Nigga, late with a bunch of candles and shit. Rest in peace, Jose. Orale. I don't know why I say orderly because I think I think generally speaking, Miami is mostly Cubans. Like it's mo- mostly is mostly Cuban Americans, but no, it is what it is. So I'm bringing that, I'm bringing that up because. I'm bringing that up because February around February, as far as on this half of the world, on our world, is going to be a, just a great. It's going to be a great month of festivities. Literally, when you go to the shores and hills of, of Brazil, we go to the beaches of Brazil, we go to the white sands of Colombia, we go to Venezuela, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, Aruba, Curaçao, Belize, Costa Rica. When you go to all these diverse countries that God has blessed with just enough pretty brown and black women with fat asses, they're all celebrating, joining hands in prayer, having a good time. Bitches just, bitches just raising their titties for beads. Bitches just show, raising up their shirts and so titties for beads. All this amazing just... <laughs> all this amazing nigga shit is happening around the world and it's and it's it's crazy like and it's crazy like it's a it's a dope it's a dope thing to see man i i i'm really jealous that i'm really jealous that i'm not somewhere where i can partake in any of this neg this pure negritude negr negritude <laughs> 
<laughs> with this this pure negritude. Like it's I am I am I am low key jealous about that. But you know I um it is what it is. I'm o- I'm okay with that. You know it is what it is. I, I'm okay with that. I'm I don't know. Hold on, real quick. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm making sure. I was making sure the microphone was on because, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I was making sure the microphone was on. Yeah, but so it's, um, yeah, man, I'm happy. I'm just happy to be at a point like where I can actually entertain that to see what's going on in the world. Like, I can't wait to get to that. I can't wait to get to that point where I don't know where I can just travel the world and, um, Myself. I'm not at the point where I can entertain that nigga because I'm not at the point where I can entertain that nigga because I'm broke right now. But at the so it would be door to get to that more point in life where I don't know I can just travel the world and sail the seas. Like that's one thing I want to do with this podcast more than anything. And I, and I really I've been saying that for the last year and a half and four months. It'll make a two year anniversary. Me discovering podcasting is my dream and my goal to be a podcaster. And one of the things I want to do. <laughs> One of the things I want to do more than anything is I want to start making concrete plans for when I do live broadcasts. Like, I mean, I think tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow for sure. I think tomorrow for sure I'm going to go to the coffee. I'm going to go to the coffee house in, um, in Sacramento and I might record a live broadcast there, you know, just to get some shit popping up just to see. Or I might do one in Dutch Bros Coffee in Galt, California. So. You know, if y'all trying to see the young boy, if you're trying to see the young boy in action, you know, come, come, come fuck with your boy. You know, I don't know. Like I kind of, sometimes I, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like, I don't know. I've been trying to figure out ways to, to, to expand my world, expand my reach when it comes to podcasting. I want to get to the point where everybody around the world is listening to me and vibing to what I got to say and just enjoying what a young nigga has to say out here. And you know, it just, I don't know. You know, if any of you niggas got any, if any of you smart ass niggas have any great ideas, please let me know because I am so interested in hearing. I'm telling you right now, nigga, I am, I am accepting all offers, all ideas. Please let the young boy know because nigga, he's hungry out here, you know. Yeah, I just spent, I just spent my last nigga. I, I after just paying rent and everything like that, nigga, I'm probably my last eight dollars and sixty two cents, nigga. I'm gonna keep it, th- I'm gonna keep it running th- with you. Nigga, it's, 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 nigga, it's slimy out here. <laughs> It is ugly out here. It is ugly. It is bad. I mean, and I um, you know, it is. It's you know, I can't really, I can't really. You know, it, it's it, 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 it's just my life at the moment. Like I can't really, I can't really do too much. It's just my life at the moment. It, it's the struggle. It's the struggle. It's, it's the it's the um, it's the phase of struggle that I'm in at the moment, and I can't really. <sighs> I can't really. I don't know. I can't really just. I can't really knock. And just gotta. I can't complain. I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I really can't just sit down and complain and lick my shoulders. I just gotta. I just gotta. I just have to. Um, I just have to keep. I have to keep going and find. I gotta find new. I just gotta find the new ways to get myself out there more. You know, I'm just I want to find the ways to get myself out there more and promote and let the whole world know who I am. You know, it is what it is. Um, I don't know what you what do you how, you guys you niggas are smart. I want you guys to let me know what do you guys think I should do. You know what do you guys what do you guys think that I should do more than anything else? And I think I'm gonna um, I think I'm gonna click glued episode right now. And I don't know, I might, I might, I might not. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't know. We'll see. Let's just talk a little bit more. I don't know. I keep on it with you. But um, Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day is approaching. <laughs> mm. Valentine's Day is approaching. The hour, the time is coming. Um, I do not have a significant other for me to treat and paste and, and love and adorn and Valentine's day candy and gifts and stuff like that. I do not have with that of a woman like that by my side, although I am accepting submissions, you know, there's this one girl on Keek on um, Instagram. Her name is Kiki 9092. She's the girl in that Migos video where they did some Joe, but they use her to cat. They cast her to be like at the, their version of the Deska. This pretty, you know, beautiful Hungarian, Nigerian girl. Skin the color of a butterfinger wrap, butterfinger bar wrapper, pretty lips, a beautiful cheekbones, nice chin, pretty eyes. You know they always say they always say black, uh, like light skinned black girls with hazel eyes or green eyes are really pretty, but she has brown eyes, like dark brown eyes, like my dark brown eyes, 
And it, I think hers are a little bit darker, but all I know is on her, they look so fucking sexy. Like, I was like, oh my God, nigga, nigga, dark, nigga, 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 brown eyes might be the lit, nigga. What you talking about? I remember, I remember, I think it was like two, three years ago, I read online some study where they said that actual, like, having dark eyes, that having dark eyes, actually, having dark, having dark eyes was rated more, brown eyes was rated more attractive than blue eyes and green eyes. I was like, nigga, who the fuck said that shit? Nigga, if you, nigga, let me tell you something right now. I got, you know, I, I have a brother who has green eyes, and, and females love this thing, you know, granted, they love me as well, but I mean, now I'm not thinking about it. Well, I'm like I think about it. Me and me and both my brothers, we both have. We're both kind of in in our because we grew up in different cities. In our cities, in our social, in our realms, we're all known for being like the lovable, popular, cute guy or whatever, whatnot. But in our own ways, like my my brother, my own younger brother, he was that in the streets. He was that as the street nigga, the street nigga who was like that. My other brother, he was a high school nigga. Like he was a baller. He was a dude who everybody thought was going to play college ball. Which he played college ball for two years. He was a nigga who's gonna be like the college bar jock dude. Me, I was like, I was like the night clipper mode. This is when I got to college. I was a college guy. I was a college jockey kind of nigga who was the night clipper mode. So everybody fuck with me. I had to hook up on the clubs. I had to hook up on the tickets on the tables and stuff like that. So we were all known for being like that social kind of star, outgoing guy in our own group. You know, we're they're all kind of like that. I think it's kind of you know, I, I'm I feel sad that we're kind of at a point now in our lives where our relationships is. Um, where our relationship is so bad now and I you know it sucks but at the same time I mean that's just the, that's just that's just the world I think I think I think I don't know like I think sometimes like <clears throat> we yeah we're just at a point where our relationship's so bad so I don't know <clears throat> that's one thing I can tell you know you know you have siblings you know it's really hard to stay on good terms speaking terms with your siblings because even though I said how we were all kind of slipping in our ways in my family, out of all my siblings, in my family in general, I'm like the weird. I'm the oddball in my family. You know, you guys, you guys probably heard my episode five days ago where I got on here and waxed about how I didn't give a fuck about my family, how they don't accept me, how they don't understand me, and I still feel some type of way to that extent. You know, I, I get mad and I get outraged because I'm like, you know, niggas don't understand me, niggas don't understand like who I am, and they don't want to fuck with me, and I, you know. I don't know. It's kind of like, cause I'm the goofy guy, you know, I was all, I've always been the goofy guy, you know, and I always felt like I, I always felt when I stepped outside of my family's parameters, I went to other places and people, which I have a polarizing poor, poor person. I understand people either like me or don't like me. And I get that, you know, niggas like, hey, niggas say I talk too much. I'm like, nigga, don't be mad, nigga, because people want to hear me talk. Niggas don't want to hear you talk. So, nigga, if you had any, nigga, if you had anything, if you had any, if you were saying anything worth saying, niggas probably would want to hear you say something. But since you're not, nigga, shut the sit up in the corner. Niggas sit in the corner, drink that high, you see that fight like a five year old, you bitch. But I think like. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I said, I said, this nigga activated my own Tourette syndrome. Nigga, you a bitch ass nigga. Nigga, you don't know talk too much, nigga. Nigga, you niggas talk too much, nigga. Nigga, I activated my own Tourette syndrome. I'm like, nigga, what? Why, nigga? Who say I talk too much, nigga? That's on the pig, nigga. Crip side, nigga. <laughs> oh my god, man. If it's, if you guys have any questions for me, if you guys have any questions for me in the podcast, if you guys have anything you want me to uh, seriously, any interesting questions that you have for me. Let me let me know. Let me know so I can um let me know. Let me know any questions or or any issues that you want me to respond to so I can tell you about them and we can have a good time and chill. And with that being said, I think I'm gonna conclude this episode. This will be an episode for you guys to enjoy and indulge on. I wanna but I guess we can conclude this up saying that the carnival is approaching. The time of the carnival is approaching, and I just wanna let you guys know that even as even as it's approaching, even even as the hour approaches even if you're not near somewhere where you can enjoy it in the traditional sense, like I'm referring to as the Carnet and Mardi Gras, the Carnival, the Rim Festival, take some time to enjoy. You know, I think one of the best ways to learn about a different culture is to is to do the dope shit that they do, like indulge in the dope shit that they do. And, you know, if you want to learn about just Caribbean culture or just, you know, West West Indian culture, West Indian, West Indian culture, just African-American culture and specifically, you know. You know, participate participate in the event. It's a great festivity, you know. So with that being said, my name is JT. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of the family. I love you guys. Um it was a pleasure talking to you guys, a pleasure loving you guys. Um 
I am really thinking about doing some live dates. I'm gonna do some live dates now. So um, if you guys wanna, you know, let me know anywhere where you guys where you guys want it, nigga. I'm, I'm gonna show. I'll show up. I'll show up and show out, nigga. I'll show up and show out. You know, if you guys, if you, if, if I am who you request, if I am who you request in the midnight hour, then by golly, I shall show up and I shall be nice. Um, that'll be it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, everybody, the family.